All right, let's see if we can graph one of these bad boys and see all the pieces coming together in action. If you want to graph this particular rational function, the first thing I would suggest that we do is see if we can factor. So let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. And I see that actually the numerator is just x, x minus plus, and I guess a 2 and a 1. OK, now that helps me a little bit. Because first of all, um, I could find asymptotes. So let's find asymptotes. So vertical asymptote, that's an x value, which make the denominator equal to 0. So x equals negative 1. Now what about the horizontal asymptote? Well, now this is not of that nice, simple form that we saw earlier. So here's the rule. For horizontal asymptotes, what you do is you look at the highest exponent appearing in the numerator, the highest exponent appearing in the denominator. If the highest exponent in the denominator is greater than the highest exponent in the numerator, then in fact you're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Simple. So if the polynomial and the denominator has a greater degree than the polynomial and the numerator, y equals 0 is your horizontal asymptote, move on. If the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is greater than the degree of the polynomial in the denominator, as in this case, then in fact what you see is that this will have no, no horizontal asymptote. You can kind of see that if you think through it a little bit. Because what happens as the x's get really, 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 really big? Right? Horizontal asymptotes asking what happens as you go off to the horizon. Well, as the x's get really, really, really big, basically subtracting 2 from a ridiculously huge number is not going to do anything. So it's negligible. In fact, adding x is not nearly as powerful as x squared. So the dominating term here, the dominating term is x squared. The dominating term downstairs is plainly the x. If x is getting to, going off, getting really, really big, adding 1 is not going to do anything. So the dominating terms are given by those highest powers. And so what do you see here? You see an x squared over x. Well, x squared over x, if you sort of squint your eyes, is just x if you simplify. So as the y's get big, as the x's get bigger and bigger and bigger, y is kind of acting like x. So it's going off. It's getting bigger. So it's not landing to an asymptote. It's sort of going off, getting bigger and bigger and bigger with x. So therefore, no horizontal asymptote. So if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, no asymptote. Now, there's one case left over. What happens when the degree of the polynomial in the numerator equals the degree of the polynomial in the denominator? Well, then it's sort of like a tie. And so you have to go into sort of like a, a, a special, special round, right? You have to go into sort of a runoff. And what you do is, in the runoff, what you do is you just look at the coefficient of the term with the highest power in the numerator, divide it by the coefficient of the term with the highest power in the denominator, and that ratio, that fraction of coefficients is your horizontal asymptote. So y equals a over b, wherever the a is the coefficient on the leading term, and b is the coefficient of the leading term in the denominator. Anyway, lots of stuff here, whereas in here we see the degree in the numerator is greater, so it dominates, and so there's no asymptote here, no horizontal asymptote. OK, great. Um, while we're here, let's actually find the zeros. Remember what the zeros of any function is. It's, it's where, in fact, um, <coughs> we cross the x-axis. What values of x make the zero? That's easy. Just look at the numerator. When do I make that? How do I make that zero? Well, if x equals 1 or if x equals negative 2. So the zeros, which are sort of fun points, x equals 1 and negative 2. That's where it's going to cross the x-axis. All right, well, armed with that, I claim we can actually plot a really accurate graph. But you might want some extra points, so we can make a little table up here. Various points for x and finding the corresponding values for, for y. Well, a few of these we know already. For example, at 1, we know it's got to be 0, because we get 0 on top divided by 2, so that's 0. It's one of the zeros. Also, at negative 2, we know it's 0. And you can plug in negative 5 into here, and you'll see negative 4.5, negative 2, negative 2, 2.5. Really? Negative 2 for 0? Sure. Plug in x equals 0, what do you get? 0, 0, negative 2, divided by 0 plus 1. So negative 2 over 1 is just negative 2. And they all check out. Who cares?
All right, let's plot these points. I'm actually going to save these points for the last because I want to show you that really this is the key idea. First, I put down any asymptotes I have and mark them carefully because they're going to cut up the world. So I have a vertical asymptote at negative 1. That means right here, and I usually denote that with a dotted line. There's no horizontal asymptote, so I cut the world up into just two pieces. You see? The left and the right piece. All right. Now, what do we know? We have zeros, so we know that x equals 1 is a 0, and x equals negative 2 is a 0. And now I know I'm going to be approaching this asymptote, but I don't know how, and that's where these points come in handy. Let's plot some of these points. So at negative 5, I'm at negative 4 and a half. So let me slide this down here. Negative 4, negative 5, negative 4 and a half is right here. Negative 5, so there's that point. At negative 3, I'm at negative 2. And then at um, negative 2, I'm at 0. We already had that. Now at 0, I'm at negative 2. So at 0, I'm at negative 2. It's right here. At 1, I'm at 0. We knew that. And at 3, I'm at 2.5. 2, 3 and a half. So 2.5 is right there. And those points allow me to, to put this together, knowing that I'm an asymptote here, and knowing there's no, there's no um, horizontal asymptote, so I'm never going to level off. And so what I see here is the following. Heading to the asymptote. And the same thing here. Really interesting looking. You can see I keep dropping, dropping down. I'm never going to sort of land. I keep going, going up, soaring up into space, never going to actually uh, land either. And yet I want to kiss this asymptote right here because I'm heading toward it as I go up and down. And I can see that I'm going up here and down here because of the points. Pretty cool. Pretty cool.